A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Now I said my ABCs, tell me what you think of me. That's the 70s version. I understand there's an updated version. <laughs> So my, my mom taught me the ABC song. And my mom taught me how to read. She used phonics, flashcards, and those um, C and C books, the ones in the 70s where you have the record and the book and you turn the page at the beat. Yeah, y'all had them books. Yeah, she used those books to teach me how to read. And she made it fun. And I was always so proud when I would get the words right or read something well. And she did this as a teen mom, single parent, living in public housing in Baltimore on public assistance. Because of her, I was able to read by the age of five. My mom is a superhero. Yeah. Yeah. Now, without question, it is a parent's responsibility, whether that parent is on public assistance or whether that parent is an executive at a Fortune 500 company, to make sure their child knows how to read. Now that I've gotten the personal responsibility statement out of the way, parents also rely on the education system to teach their kids to read, regardless of zip code, gender, or race. All kids should be able to read on grade level by the end of third grade. But unfortunately, many are not. The education system produces inequitable outcomes. It advantages those who are fluent, and it disadvantages poor kids, kids of color, and kids who come from high poverty communities. And when the system fails, we immediately place blame. We place blame on the parents, we even place blame on the kids themselves. Then we have this narrative that it's about personal failure and personal responsibility. But as my friend Myra Jones Taylor once said, it's not that our kids are broken, it's the system that is broken. That's right. And she's just so brilliant, but that was a great quote. When the system fails and we blame ourselves and, and blame kids, I really feel this every day in Arkansas. I mean, this is truly evident in Arkansas. 31% of fourth graders are proficient or above proficient in reading. That means close to seven out of 10 kids do not read on grade level. Can you really tell me that close to 70% of those kids all have bad parents? Or that all of those kids are poor performing kids? This is a systemic problem. At the Winthrop Rockefeller Foundation, we have a long history of funding systems disruption. And I believe philanthropy has a responsibility to support dismantling systems that do not serve kids and families well. So I want to offer, in my humble opinion, three ways that we need to raise the bar higher for the field of philanthropy. So A, we need to be agents of change versus promoting charity. Now hear me out on this one. Thank you for the claps, but hear me out on this one. Bookmobiles backpack programs that distribute books to kids are all necessary and wonderful, okay? Because I don't want nobody leaving here talking about how she dissed the backpack program, <laughs> right? They're all wonderful and lovely. They make you feel good when you fund them, and you get immediate gratification. But charity supports symptoms. Philanthropy examines root causes and provides resources for a multiplier effect. So at the Winthrop Rockefeller Foundation, we fund Making Every Day Count. It's an initiative of the Arkansas Grade Level Reading Campaign. 
It works to decrease chronic absence since students who are chronically absent are less likely to read on grade level. It took six years for us to develop the evidence-based approach, for us to build the policy case, for us to create the partnerships among communities, schools, and 40 school districts. Today, every school in the state now tracks chronic absence. And they use the data as an indicator, an early warning indicator, to intervene when kids fall behind academically. That is philanthropy. Which brings me to my second point. As funders, we need to be risk takers versus reward seekers. Systems change can only be achieved by tackling issues based on impact versus sexiness. Now, six years developing a system, tracking chronic absence so that kids don't fall behind academically is not super sexy, right? But it is a systemic game changer. And we have too many funders who do not want to take risks and who do not want to risk um, their reputational capital. They don't want to get into the messiness of systemic change. I have colleagues who say that their board members, um, they don't want to, uh, well, work is one. I heard that. I heard that. Um, <laughs> I heard that over there. But they don't say they don't want to work. What they do say is that they don't want to get into the news. for any. They don't want to have any negative news or be in the news for anything negative. And they don't want to align themselves with organizations or issues that can be controversial. Basically, they don't want anything negative. If you're avoiding risk, and you're not funding systemic change, then you're supporting and maintaining the status quo. Which brings me to my third point. As funders, we need to seed bold, audacious innovations, ideas, agendas. Philanthropy can make big systemic change happen. We have the um, access. We have the autonomy. We have the resources. We have the connections to make change happen. Again, I am not trying to diss program grants. Do not leave here and say, Cherie said she ain't like program grants, OK? <laughs> I'm not trying to diss them at all. But there's a hard truth. We have too many funders, and I have too many colleagues that are funding grants and not making change. And unless we put grant dollars and resources into big, bold interventions and game-changing strategies, our families will continue to stay status quo the same, no matter how many free books kids receive. So a shout out to all my superhero mom and moms and dads who are teaching their kids to read. You should expect more from us, not the other way around. So we need to raise the bar higher for philanthropy. And we say, oftentimes you'll see in our mission statements, that we serve the community. And we say that for a reason. My challenge is, let's go out there and serve. Now you know my ABCs. Next time, won't you sing with me? Thank you. <laughs>